We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lab Doctors podcast. So this week we're going to be talking about alphabet. Okay. <laughs> Actually, not really. Like right? A, B, C, D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not really A, B, C, D. We are going to go through all the vitamins in the world. Oh. <laughs> oh. I couldn't think of anything. And I was like, oh, maybe let's just do alphabets. <laughs> Is that like vitamin Z? I thought it's like A, B, C, D, E, K. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to like start scrolling one by one and then I realized that that would take too much time. So basically there are 13 essential vitamins that we need to know and we can go through one by one. So let's start with A. Yeah, let's start with A. <laughs> so do you know what is vitamin A? Carrot. Yes, oh my god, I was going to oh, say carrot. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, yeah, so vitamin A, there's two forms. One of it is beta-carotene, or it's pro-vitamin A carotenoids. Okay. And then these are converted into retinol, and retinol is the other form, like retinol or retinol esters. Right. So the purpose, anybody want to guess? What's carrots good, good for? Good for your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, when I was young, they always say like, eat carrots, good for your eyes. Because yeah. I got lazy eyes. So they were like, eat your carrots. Oh. And I don't like carrots. So yes, vitamin A is good for your eye health. The beta carotene from carrots are a precursor to vitamin A. Mm. It also stimulates production and activity of your white blood cells. It takes part in bone remodeling, like helping you refresh your bones in your body. It maintains healthy endothelial cells. So endothelial cells are the cells that line your blood, blood vessels. vessels. Yeah, and... And other places. And other places. So yeah. basically your linings of whatever. Your internal organs. Yeah. It's like the skin for yeah. the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds so disgusting. But yes, it is right? very accurate. Because it's like epithelial is the outside, endothelial is the inside. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't know carrots were good for all these other things as well. Oh wait, yeah. there's one more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it regulates cell growth and division. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Carrots. I mean, not just carrots. <laughs> Sorry, I always confuse carotene with carotene. You know, like, this is C-A-R-O-T-E-N-E, Yes. Right? Mm. It's different from the skin. And the carotene. hair one, like K-E-R-A-T-I-N. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell the order we are going. So we're going to go into like the purpose and then the, what happens if you are deficient with this vitamin and then where we can get these vitamins. Okay, so deficiency. Okay, let's go to the mild ones. Mild ones are like fatigue, prone to infections because it's helpful with the activity of our white blood cells mm -hmm. and infertility as well. For severe ones, obviously because carrots are good for your eyes, it can lead to blindness or night blindness or dry skin or hair. Okay, so sauces, we already went through carrots. carrots. <laughs> what um, else? Mm, carotenoids. Um, yeah, so carrots. it's called yellow vegetable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Carrots, pumpkin, sweet potato. I can't list everything lah. So like, yeah. And then other than that, leafy green vegetables, tomatoes, red bell pepper, liver, eggs, fish, and milk. Okay, next, let's go to alphabet. B. <laughs> yeah. And do you know that there are many, many B forms of vitamin? Yeah, like yes. B2, 16. I know B12 is the one 12. that vegans struggle with. Sorry, yes. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, so there's no B16. Okay. There are eight forms. Eight. Wait, let me count again. Let's just label them as like EFG. There's eight, yeah. Yeah, I always wonder. Similar enough to be classified in the same family, but different enough to warrant its own classification. Is it? Or is it because they started like, with C already? So they were like, they're like, oh shit, there's actually more Bs. I need to slot it into B. <laughs> so there are eight. Yes. B16 is not one of them. Yes. Okay, so let's go with B. One. That's V1. B1. Oh my B1. god, this sounds like bananas in pajamas. Oh. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking B1? I think I am B2. <laughs> anyway, B1 is known as thiamine. It's involved in growth and function of various cells and breakdown of nutrients for energy. For B1, only a small amount is stored in the liver, so daily intake is important. Mm. What will happen if you are deficient with B1? You get weight loss, confusion, memory loss, muscle weakness, and lowered immunity. And for the severe forms, it's this thing known as beriberi. B-E-R-I-B-E-R-I. -E 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 this is muscle loss and diminished feelings in your hand and feet. So they call this peripheral neuropathy. Damn. So this impaired reflection 
reflex and motor function can lead to deadly fluid buildup in the heart and lower limbs. So where can you get B1? You can get it from meats such as pork, fish, whole grains, beans, green peas and yogurts. Next, let's go to B. So... <laughs> I feel like we're going down the basement now. Yeah, it really does feel like that now. B2 is known as riboflavin. Oh, mm. yes. Familiar, but I don't know what it is. It's pink dolphin. Oh, really? Yes. Riboflavin is a key component of coenzymes involved in cell growth, energy production, breakdown of fats, steroids, and medication. So for B2 gut bacteria can actually produce small amounts, but these are not enough. And most of it is used immediately and not stored. So if you lack B2, you get cracked lips, mm. sore throat, hair loss, skin rash, and anemia. And this sounds like me. <laughs> Yeah, and the severe one will be cataract. So oh. we can find B2 in dairy milk, yogurt again, cheese, eggs, beef, pork, organ meats, chicken breast, salmon, fortified cereal and bread, nuts and spinach. Oh, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, next, B3. <laughs> B3 is known as niacin, N-I-A-C-I-N. Mm. So it's available in nicotinic acid or nicotinamide. And your body can also convert tryptophan, which is an amino acid, into nicotinamide. So niacin is a co-enzyme for more than 400 enzymes. It helps to convert nutrients into energy, make cholesterol, fats, and create and repair your DNA. And it's also an antioxidant. Mm. Mm. What's the deficiency? Oh, the deficiency is rare because it's well absorbed. Oh. So if you eat it, yeah, it's quite rare. So therefore, they only talk about the severe deficiencies, which is known as pellagra, P-E-L-L-A-G-R-A. This is a condition where you get dark, scaly rash on your skin, exposed to the sunlight. Damn. You also can get depression, headache, fatigue, muscle loss, and hallucination. So it's found in red meat, poultry, fish, brown rice, fortified cereal breads, nuts, seeds, and banana. Okay, next, let's go into B. Four. Is there a four? There's no four. <laughs> oh, damn it. Because I know there's like eight, right? But then there's a 12, so... <laughs> yes, there's no number four. <laughs> so next is B5. B5 is pentothenic acid. So pentatonic acid, or B5, is used to make coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is a coenzyme <laughs> yes. that helps enzyme build and break down fatty acids. It also has other metabolic functions. Also, the gut bacteria can produce a small amount, but not enough for your body. So for severe deficiencies, you can get headache, fatigue, irritability, disturbed sleep, nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, and muscle cramps. That sounds like me. <laughs> Where do we get it? Yeah. Oh, it can be found in almost all plant and animal food. Best sources are from beef, chicken, organ meats, fortified cereals, and some vegetables. Basically, you should not have a lack of it. Mm. Next, let's go on to B6. B6 is pyridoxine. So pyridoxal 5 prime phosphate or PLP is the active form. So this active form is a coenzyme that helps with the breakdown of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. It also maintains normal levels of homocysteine. So homocysteine, if you have high levels in your body, then it can cause certain heart problems. So B6 is important to maintain the normal levels of it. Mm. B6 also supports immune function and brain health. And in some studies, they find that it's good in the treatment of pregnancy-induced nausea. So what happens if you're deficient with B6? Deficiency occurs when other B vitamins in the body are low, especially B12 and folic acid, which we'll go into later. So if you have a severe deficiency of B6, you can get anemia, skin condition, depression, confusion, and lower immunity. You can find it in beef liver, tuna, salmon, fortified cereals, poultry, dark leafy green vegetables, bananas, papayas, and oranges. Okay, next is B7. Can you guess what's B7? It's like something we use in the lab. Um, Buona Vista. What? I don't know. Is it something acid? Is it some kind no, of acid? No, it's like something to do with like peroxidase. No, it's a biotin. Uh, oh. Is that light? I thought, is that, I thought that was light. Oh, that it's was not shampoo. antibody. I thought biotin is just like how it's connected. It's not shape. like, it's an, but it's antibody, right? It's Can make it in the antibody. Anyway, so biotin or B7 assists enzymes in the breaking down of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. It regulates signals from cells and activity of genes. Often, do you know like biotin is added to supplements for hair, skin, and nails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you, ha shampoos, you hear before, right? I think. Yeah, I hear before. Yeah. 
or like I see before. Mm. Yeah, but these are actually not conclusive. Like as in whether they really have a benefit is not conclusive. <sighs> but people just like add it and like promote it that way. <sighs> but if you have a deficiency in B7, you can get hair loss, brittle nails, scaly skin rash around the eyes, nose and the mouth. So maybe to a certain extent it has some help with your skin and your hair. But I don't know. In all the websites, they also state like how much you're supposed to take. Mm. Basically... Just take your mouth device lah. Mm. <laughs> so you can find B7 in beef liver again, cooked eggs, salmon, pork, avocado, nuts, and sweet potato. But I feel like I'm either not eating or allergic to half of these things. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just eat your mouth device. Yeah, I think I'll do that then. <laughs> okay, next. After B7, let's go to... Is there an 8? I think it's 9. Yes, it's 9. Yeah. There's, a, there's no B8, it's B9. I don't know. Because it's B9. Uh, ha, 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 oh ha, my ha, god, ha. I just got it. <laughs> okay, so B9 is also folate or folic acid. Oh, right. oh, oh, oh. Mm. It's a building block in your DNA, right? Yes, yes, yes. So B9 helps with DNA and RNA formation. Mm. One of those baby supplements. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So B9 is involved in protein metabolism as well. It also breaks down homocysteine, which again is the, if you have too high levels, it's not good for your heart. It's needed to produce healthy red blood cells during periods of rapid growth. So this is important in pregnancy and fetal development. So yeah, this is very important for pregnancy. And folic acid is the better absorbed form compared to folate, Mm. which is the natural form of vitamin B9. Mm. So what happens if you are deficient in B9? You get this thing called megaloblastic anemia. So this is a condition referred to a lack of red blood cell production. And you actually produce bigger red blood cells, which Ooh. is like not, oh, right, right. Yeah. not correct size lah, mm. due to the lack of folate. Uh, hence megaloblastic, like mega, like it's big. Then blast is the precursor type of cell to... Mm. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Also, you can get fatigue, irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, hair loss, pale skin, and mouth sores. You can get it from dark leafy vegetables, peanuts, fresh fruits, whole grains, liver, seafood, and eggs. Next, B12 is known as cobalamin. Of course. (laughs) Totally knew that. It helps form red blood cells and DNA, and it's a key player in function and development of brain and nerve cells. So again, if you have a lack of it, you can get megaloblastic anemia, Mm -hmm. fatigue, weakness, nerve damage with numbness, memory loss, dementia, depression, and seizure. All these are like severe lah. Whoa, drink more pink dolphin, it has B12. Is there a lot of sugar in pink dolphin? Absolutely. It's a healthier choice though. (laughs) Anyway, you can get B12 from fish, shellfish, liver, red meats, eggs, poultry, dairy products, cheese, milk, yogurt, fortified breakfast cereal and soy. Okay. Oh, are we moving to C? Yes. (laughs) Everyone's favorite. Ascorbic acid. Yes. Vitamin C is ascorbic acid. Mm. Okay, so vitamin C was discovered when citrus fruits prevented scurvy. Mm. Mm. So scurvy is the condition where you get skin spots from bleeding and bruised broken blood vessels. You can also get swelling or bleeding of your gums and eventually you get a loss of teeth. Yep. Hair loss, delayed skin wound healing. Yep. So vitamin C is also important in controlling infections mm. and stimulates white blood cell activity. Mm. And it's a powerful antioxidant, this website stated. I quote, powerful antioxidant. (laughs) (laughs) And it's also needed to make collagen. And it helps make several hormones and chemical messengers used by your brain and your nerves. Mm. If you have a lack of vitamin C, you get fatigue, iron deficiency, anemia, as well as scurvy. So where can you find it? Oranges. Yes. Citrus fruits. Citrus fruits. Oranges, Mm. kiwi, lemon. You can also get it in tomato or cruciferous veggie, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Okay, next. D. D. Oh, just a D? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, sunlight. D is something we should know because yeah. so we yeah. learned it. I mean, you don't get that from the sun. It just activates your body to make vitamin D. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Stop spreading the rumor that the sun emits vitamin D. That doesn't make sense. Huh? <laughs> 
Is that a thing? Yeah, I feel like some people is like, oh yeah, go and get your vitamin D, meaning that the sun gives us vitamin D. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Helps us yeah. get vitamin D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So vitamin D is available in supplements in the form of D2 or D3. So right. D2 is called ergocalciferol and D3 is cholecalciferol. Right. The primary source is from our bodies that make it and it's important in helping us absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus and these two are important for your bones. Mm. Mm. It also reduces cancer growth, control infections, and reduce inflammation. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, you get a condition called rickets. So rickets is a condition in infants and children who have soft bones and skeletal deformities because they have a failure of their bone tissues from hardening. Also, you can get this condition called osteomalacia. It's a condition in adults of weak and softened bones that can be reversed with supplementation. Mm. So like what you mentioned, it's produced in the presence of the sun's ultraviolet B rays. Mm. And in humans, we produce the form D3, whereas D2 is produced in plants and fungi. So there are few foods that contain it naturally. So taking supplements is good or basically going out into the sun. Other than that, you can take cod liver oil, salmon, tuna, swordfish, sardine, beef liver, egg yolk, fortified orange juice, cereal, and dairy milk. So yeah, and if I remember correctly, you know the Gucci tunnels in Ho Chi Minh? It's called C-U-C-H-I if I remember correctly. It's like where during the Vietnam War, then they dig all these very, very small tunnels to hide inside. Okay. So because they hide inside for so long, like right, right. they don't get exposed to the sun. Right. And therefore they had all these conditions as well. Right. If I remember correctly. Okay. Okay, next is vitamin E. E. That's an E? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So vitamin E is an antioxidant. It enhances immunity and prevents clot formation in your heart arteries. So if you are deficient in vitamin E, you get retinopathy. This is a damage of the retina of your eyes and it can impair vision. Also, there's peripheral neuropathy, which we mentioned just now, is damage to the peripheral nerves, usually in your hands or feet, and causes weakness and pain. Mm. Also, you can get ataxia, which is loss of control of body movements mm. and decreased immune function. So you can get it in plant-based oils, nuts, like peanuts, almond, sunflower seeds, fruits like mango, vegetables, like asparagus and spinach. Mm. And lastly, oh yeah, the last one. Vitamin K. We have vitamin K, yes. Like, so there's no F-G-H-I. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where all the in-between alphabets <laughs> went to. Probably starts with a K. Does it? Yes. What's the active compound? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, my it God. It comes in two forms known as phalloquinone, which is from green leafy vegetables, and menaquinone, which is produced by bacteria in the human body. Vitamin K is important for making proteins required for blood clotting and bone formation. Blood clotting, that means, let me guess, excessive blood loss is part of deficiency. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. So vitamin K deficiency is rare, but if you are deficient in vitamin K, you get, like what's wrong with it, longer time for your blood to clot, bleeding, hemorrhaging, mm. osteopenia, or osteoporosis. Mm. So where can we get it from? Phylloquinone, you can get it from green leafy vegetable like kale, spinach, broccoli, lettuce, cabbage, mm. soybean, canola oil, and menaquinones, you can get it from fermented soybeans and smaller amounts in meat, cheese, and eggs. Mm. And it's all for your vitamin lesson. Mm. Need to find a multivite. Yeah, I just take the Centrum one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, kind of popular. My cousin recently came back from Australia and he bought like a lot of multivitamins for like the extended family. You should have asked me. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, I was finding candles for you everywhere. Candle was great though. Still, still yeah. great. You can buy from iHerb, which yeah, is yeah, I yeah. think is from the US, and it's quite cheap. Is it cheaper? Also. Oh, okay. Yeah. So conclusion is eat your vitamins. They are all important, but also don't overdose on your vitamins because there are some vitamins where if you overdose, your mm. absorption goes down. So oh. I think generally what we learn in school is like B and C are water soluble. So like if you take too much of it, you will just excrete it. Oh, They do mention like certain vitamins are destroyed with high heat Oof. or like because they're water soluble, they get into the soup that you cook and stuff like oh. that. So you have to drink, drink the soup. The soup la. Don't mm. throw it down the drain. Damn, I always hate drinking soups. Why I'm so deficient? Maybe that's why. No, as in so so I guess it's like 
you you might think like oh I'm cooking vegetables I'm getting all these but oh. if it goes out into the the sauce and, or like you blanch it and then you I don't know where it goes mm-hmm. stuff like that or you cook something like too long you might lose all the nutrients that you need so mm. uh, I I don't know just just eat the multivite <laughs> and as usual subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify like and comment would really help us out. You can also follow us on our social media, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. We'll link the articles in the episode description, so check that out if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you.